chapter 2, beginning at verse 11, book of Titus, verse 11, chapter 2, verse 11. Chapter 2, Titus chapter 2, verse 11 through 15. All right, it says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Thank God, church, God has given us the grace and the gift of salvation. And God, I believe, some people believe, you know, some people are born to, to go to hell, some people are born to go to heaven. The Bible says it was to all men. Salvation was dealt out that everybody could be saved. And there's no excuse for anybody to be lost. So thank God for that. He said, salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Now, church, if we do that right there, we're going to be a witness to a lost and dying world. This is what it says there. To live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So if we do these little things right there, I believe we'll have an impact upon the, on the lost dying world to our friends, to our family, and everybody around us. And not only that, because you know what, you know what makes us live that way? It says, because looking, amen, uh, for, the, uh, for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our salvation our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let me read that again now. Looking, amen, for that blessed hope. We have a hope this morning, church. But as we have that hope, looking for the appearing of Jesus, he wants us to live soberly. He wants us to live righteously. He wants us to live in a purified life, amen, that we can be a blessing for those around us. And the Bible says in verse 14, for who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purifying unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. These things speak, exhort, and rebuke with all authority and let no man despise thee. So Paul, I believe, was telling Titus Amen. What we, uh, what he needed to do, and I believe that's what we need to do. Amen. Live in a way, Amen, that we can be pleasing to God and let the world know that Jesus is the answer. I have thanked God this morning that Jesus is yes. the answer to our salvation. Right. I thank God this morning that He, Amen, came down and to seek and to save those that which were lost, and that everybody could be saved. Thank God, church, we're here this morning because of the grace of God and because of the salvation He's given us and all the love that He bestowed upon us. We talked about the, the love of God and the good things of God. Just think about what Jesus has done for us. So he, He's our lively hope this morning. He is our hope, church, amen, that we can live a purified and a righteous life and we can be pleasing unto God. Now, church, I believe that He put us here for a reason, that we can be a witness to the lost and dying world. And church, when we're going through something, that we, we're going to have, like Brother James said a while ago, we're going to have our ups and downs. We're going to have our trials. We're going to have our disappointments. But thank God Jesus is with us. Amen. He said he'd never leave us, nor forsake us. He's always there with us. And I, I like that song, he, he sends an angel, amen, on our way to help us. So church this morning, let's worship him and let's praise him and let's thank him for what he's done. Amen. And let's begin to exhort people, lift up people up that Jesus is the answer to their problem. Jesus is the way to for eternal life. Jesus is the way. Church, I tell you, I believe we ought to tell that everybody that Jesus is the answer to every problem, every situation that we have. Because I believe he wants to bless us and lift us up. Can I hear an amen? So church, I thank God this morning that we have Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. But see, Titus was talking about, amen, the appearing of Jesus Christ. And I believe he was telling the people, exhorting the people, amen, and telling the people, he was even rebuking some of the people, amen, because they were not looking for the coming of Jesus. 
And church, we're living in the church age today that a lot of Christian people, let alone the sinner people, are not looking for Jesus to come back. And church, let me tell you something. I am looking for Jesus to come Amen. back. And church, I believe it helps us to live purely. I believe it helps us to live holy. And I, I believe it helps us to be going about the Father's business. So this morning, God gave me this thought. thought are you looking? Now, church, the, the Bible says he was. He told Titus, he said that, that these things speak, exhort, and rebuke with all authority. Now, what he was saying about here, back to the top, it says that, that we shall live soberly, righteous, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope. Now, church, I believe we'll keep looking for Jesus. And I believe he's coming back. So we need to understand, church, as I said in our Sunday school lesson this morning, when Jesus went to Lazarus' tomb, and he knew that he was dead. You know what, church? He cried out to Lazarus, Lazarus, come forth. Now, church, I'm looking for that voice this morning. I'm looking for that trump. In fact, we saw in the song long ago that, uh, that uh, something good's about to happen. Now, church, we don't know when that good day is going to happen, but it could happen today. It could happen before I get done preaching. It could happen before we take the last breath because the Bible says when he comes back, he's coming back, amen, in the twinkling of an eye. We won't have time to live holy. We won't have time to, for forgiveness. We won't have time to do nothing because I believe when that trump sounds, and I believe God's people is the only one that's going to hear that sound because the Bible said when the, the prophet said the dead in Christ shall rise. I'm looking for that sound, church. Are you looking for that sound? Praise God. The Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. The Bible said, For the Lord himself to descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of an archangel with a triumph of God. So he's going to have a voice in this. He had a voice when it comes to Lazarus and he has a voice when it comes to us. And thank God, church, we'll look. I'm looking for it. Now the people today are not looking. And church, we need to exhort them, encourage them to keep looking. In fact, sometimes we have to rebuke them because sometimes, amen, they put priorities in the wrong place. I remember one time there was a sin just told me, said, the reason I didn't come this morning because everybody was crying about wanting some soup beans for dinner. I'm going to tell you, church, you can fix soup beans anytime. We just need to get our priorities in the right place because, church, we need to be looking for that sound. We need to be looking for that sound of the trumpet because it's going to be the voice of an archangel. It's going to be the voice of God and he's coming back. Glory to God. Can I hear an amen? Can I hear a hand clap? Church, he's coming back, glory to God. And we need to live in expectation that he's coming back, glory to God. This is what the Bible says there now. Verse 17 says, Then we shall all our lives and may shall be called together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So church, let me tell you something. I, I, this old body, nobody's going to hold it back. Right. We sang that song, Hey, no grave will hold my body down. They sung that last night, but then the Colonel Rest when they were saying it. And I tell you, the people were about to get happy. Amen. They should have really begin, kept singing that song. How many know sometimes that when you're singing a song and people are getting into it, you should just keep on on singing? Because amen. somebody ain't been being touched by that. Somebody needed to be encouraged by that. And church, let me tell you something. I thank God that we have a lively hope. Praise God. And when that trumpet sounds, whether we're alive or dead, praise God, we're going to lose gravity and we're going to go up to heaven, praise God. And the Bible says, we're going to live with Jesus forever and forever. I'm looking for that church. It will take me a long time to, amen, to go around to everybody in heaven and shake their hands. And, amen. And, you know, I'd like to see Moses. I'd like to see Abraham. I'd like to see Noah. I, first of all, I want to see Jesus. But church, we got a lot of things to talk about. I've got a brother. I've got a mom. I've got sisters up there. A dad up there. And Jesus up there. Church, I mean, we got something to shout about. we got something to glorify God about. And church, I'm here to tell you, we need to get happy when we begin to say, ain't no grave will hold my body down. I'm going to lose gravity. I'm going to leave this old ground. Amen. Oh, Amen. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These words were encouragement. He said, encourage, exhort, reprove, and rebuke, amen. And church, let me tell you something. If you're, I'm going I'm to reprove you a little bit this morning. If you're living in sin, you better get rid of sin. Because the Bible says that it's easy to sin. 
because they let us slip out every way and sin that's so easy to set us. And church, we gotta walk this race. I'm gonna run this race, but we gotta keep make sure that we're not weighted down with everything in the world. And when Jesus sounded that trumpet, glory to God, and when God said, Jesus, son, go get to the prize, I'm gonna tell you, I want to be ready. How about you? And rebuke the sinner, rebuke the backslider, and those who are not living right. The Bible says in verse 18, Wherefore comfort one another with these words. These words are comfort, church. We're not preaching this enough. Amen. I tell you, I know Jesus is coming back. But we know what, church? We need to tell people you've got to live a holy life, a purified life. And he said, let us walk. But this is what he said. He said, let us, let us teach that denying ungodliness and worldly lust that we should live soberly. That means we need to be awake and understand what's going on in church. Too many Christian people are asleep and they don't know what's going on around them. We need to understand our surroundings, what's going on in this world. This whole world is just about wrapped it up and Christian people can't even recognize it. Can I hear an Amen. Live soberly, it says, ungodly, in this present world. Oh, give a Lord a hand clap. I'm ready to go, aren't you? Amen. Oh, I tell you, the, the, the sister in said, well, we know. In church, we know, we know if we're saved or not. Right. Our spirit bears with us God's spirit that we are saved. But like the sister said, my soul is well. Yeah. Church, when you know where your souls are going, my church, let me tell you something, church, my spirit is going back to God. That belongs to God. The church, God gave us a soul, and that soul belongs to us. And wherever that soul goes, that's my responsibility. That is your responsibility. You're in charge of that soul. You either have that soul to go to heaven or have to go to hell because that soul is in charge of you. And this whole body is going to turn back to dust. But oh, when that trumpet sounds. I tell you, I've got brothers and sisters and stuff that in the grave right now. My mom and dad, that old body's probably turned to dust for now. The church, when that trumpet sounds, I don't know how God's going to do it, but he's going to breathe up on them, praise God, and they're going to raise up, and God's going to put flesh back on them, and he's going to breathe that spirit back in them, and they're going to live a glorified body. I'm going to about you, but I'm ready to go, church. I'll give a Lord a hand for that church. I'm looking for that's why I do the things I do. Yes. Amen. Too many Christian people are slothful, lazy, and, and walk around sleep when they should be living a good, godly life. Witnesses for God. Can I hear an amen? amen. See, we, we are, we're our witness. And the Bible says when you, when you walk around denying ungodliness and, and worldly lust and live soberly and righteous and godly in this place, you are a witness, amen, that you've got something going for you, and that is Jesus. Are you looking for his coming? Amen. Are you looking for that sound? Is what I'm saying. Yeah. Because church, only the pure, only the righteous is going to hear that sound. Glory to God. And are you looking? I love this. I talk about this all the time. You know the world is rolling right now. Even the animals. When Adam and Eve, and thank God, this morning that, that God put an angel on in that gate. And what allowed them to go back in and eat the, the, the tree of life? Amen. Because think, think about this. The living and things that the world, even the animal world was, was cursed. And, and man was cursed. The earth was everything was cursed because of Adam and Eve. Amen. When they when they went against God and, and, and eat of the forbidden fruit. And church, let me tell you something. Jesus is going to make everything right. He's come to do away with that curse because he can't become that curse when he was hung up on the tree. Glory to God. But there's coming a day, church, that God is going to change the creation. God is going to change, amen, the earth. And God is going to change me and you, glory to God. I'm looking for time. I know I say a lot of time. I'm looking for that change. Yeah. And the older I get, I'm going to tell you, church, I, I just spoke a little bit of grass yesterday. And I got up, I couldn't hardly walk. You know why? Because this old body's getting right. old. And church, you can't hardly do nothing more. I got a particular sister back. She went back to do to carry some water up. And she said, that has worn me out. You know why? Because we're getting older. We're getting feeble and everything. But I'm looking for that time, glory to God, when that trumpet sounds, glory to God, and our old body changes into a glorified body, 
and we're not going to get old anymore. Glory to God. We're not going to lose our hair. We're not going to lose our teeth. We're not going to lose our eyesight. We're going to, I mean, we're going to be a perfect example of Jesus Christ. Give them all a hand, Pastor. I'm looking for that change. But the, the whole world is looking for that change, church. The whole world's groaning because of that. The Bible says in, in uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 20, For our conversation is in heaven, from which as we look for the Savior. I'm looking for the Savior. Are you looking this morning? I'm looking for Jesus. Amen. In, in, the, in the book of the Acts, the, the Bible said that all through the book of Acts and all through the other, the other books, people kept looking for Jesus to come back. Are you looking for the Savior? The Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vow body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. We're going to, I don't know how, what we're going to look like. The Bible doesn't say what this. He said we're going to look like unto him. If I can look like Jesus, I'm going to be happy. Are you listening to what I'm saying, church? If I can look like Jesus, and church, we tell you, I believe he was happy. I believe he's going to have a good glorified body. And church, I tell you, I believe he was happy with his body. And I believe we're going to be happy with our body. Sometimes, church, we look in the mirror, and everybody's this way. Don't let you just by yourself. And you're always complaining about this and complaining about that. My nose is not right. My hair is gone. We're always complaining about how we look. And even though God made us the way we are, we should be happy the way we look. But one day, God, God Jesus is going to change us, and we're going to look like that to Him, and I'm going to be happy, glory to God. Give a lot of hand clap, church. See, this was a mystery at one time. How could God do this? But the Paul understood that because he went to the third heaven, and he saw things that we haven't seen yet. He saw things that we, he could we could he could even write about, amen. But he saw some things. He saw some bodies, amen. That he didn't dream about because church it was a mystery. But God showed Paul the mystery. Yes. What happens when you die, amen? Church, we're going to have a glorified body. Right. Paul says in First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verse fifty-one: "Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkle of an eye." Life's trump for the trump shall sound and the dead shall rise, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Are you looking for that change this morning, church? Are you looking to have a body like Jesus? I'm looking for a body, amen, that looks like Jesus. I want to walk like Jesus. I want to talk like Jesus. I want to look like Jesus because, church, he was one perfect specimen right here at Amen. He is the creator, the king of kings, and the Lord of lords. And he's everything to me, and he should be everything to you. And Paul told Titus to exhort and reprove and rebuke. You know, he encourage people. Tell them Jesus is about to come back. And if we need to tell our friends or loved ones, we need to kind of rebuke them a little bit and encourage them a little bit. Hey, hang on, Jesus is coming back. Stop doing your thing that you're doing and be right for God. Church, I'm here to tell you, it's easy to sin. Paul said, what? Let us lay aside every sin and wait that so easily be set up. But if Paul had trouble with sin, you and I are going to have trouble with sin. As long as we're in this body, in this old body of ours, it's weak. And Paul says, I grab a hold of this old body, amen, and I beat it, amen, that I would be a castaway. I'll give the Lord a hand clap, church. I'm looking for that great day when our bodies, even the world grows, church. Paul said the book of Romans, it said the, 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 the animals grow, the, the world grows, and we grow. When we get to the place that we're not going to be changed and to get out of here, the world's not going to get better. Paul, Peter said, it's on toward generation. That means it's going to get worse. It's not going to get better, church. It's going to get worse. That's why Jesus has to come back because sin has to fulfill the whole thing and it's going to get worse and worse as long as we don't stay upon this world. That's why we're, the whole world groans. So I'm looking for that day. Paul, Paul told Titus what Titus said, looking for that great day. Looking. But we've got to live soberly and righteous that we'll be ready for God. Looking for that blessed hope. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward. Amen. To that heavenly place. There was a song, my, uh, they sung at my father's 
funeral, Paulo's funeral. I can get it right. It says some call it, uh, some call it heaven. Some call it paradise. At least I call it home. It's going to be home, church. We haven't made it home yet. But the Bible tells us things we've got to understand. We've got to, we've got to look for that home. We've got to look for that place. Amen. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 64, verse 3, number one, we've got to wait on God. God's coming back, church. And he's going to come back in the twinkling of an eye. And there's no time to make wrong right and right wrong. So we just got to wait on him. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 64, verse 4. <clears throat> and for the sense, the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, neither have the eyes seen. O oh God, besides thee, only God knows. Amen. And it says what he had prepared for them that wait for him. Oh, you can look and see, the Bible says, what, what are we supposed to be doing? Live was holy, pure. But, and Jesus said, before the said, watch and pray. He said, I'll say, watch and pray. Why? Because he's coming back, church. But we've got to learn to wait. Now, sometimes it's hard to wait. We live in a world today that is so convenient to everything. Now, here they man, like I said the other day, I said, we sat there and put popcorn in the microwave or something like that. Would you hurry? Would you hurry? I'm hungry. Did I hear an amen? amen. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. And we've got to love it. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 says, But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear hath heard, neither have entered the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. So church, if we'll just wait and we'll just love him. And keep on uh, just living holy and upright and perfect. Church, God will bless us and we'll be a witness to our families, witness to our loved ones. I mean, church, we'll be a witness that the people say, you know what? I believe there's something real. Now, let me tell you something. I know I wasn't the most ungodless person when God saved me, and you probably wasn't either. Some may be worse than what I was. Amen. But you know what? God took that light and changed it. Amen. To let, let the world know, amen, that he can change anybody, save anybody. I don't care who you are or how you are. God can save you, wash you, cleanse you, and begin to make you kings and priests. Amen. That you be a, a, a candidate, amen, for heaven. Can I hear an amen? Oh, give the Lord a hand, clap, church. I'm looking for that place, praise God. That's called, called a mansion. I'm looking for that mansion. Not no uh, uh, cabin up, I'm looking for a mansion. Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 1. How many believe in God this morning? Amen. He said, if you believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house are many mansions. He says, if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again. He said, if it were not true, I would have told you. See, he's telling us the truth, church. I go prepare a place for you. If I go prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you to myself. Then he goes down to verse number six and says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And no man can come to the Father for the seismic through me. Church, are you looking? Paul told Titus, he said, he said, exhort, exhort them, encourage them, reprove them. That's what I do when I preach. I try to re reprove you. I try to exhort you. I even try to rebuke you in a gentle way. So let's know Jesus is coming back. We're going to live a holy and purified life, church, and get, and get busy working for God. God didn't save us. Amen. Just said on the sea. He, he, he wants us to be a witness to our loved ones, to our family, to our neighbors, to our coworkers, everybody that's around us. We should be conscious, have a conscience about us. I tell you, I don't have a conscience like I used to have. When I first got saved, I, I had a conscience about me. I, I, I was afraid of it. Anybody around me, I want to tell them about Jesus. And actually, you turn some people off that way. But you know what? I never turn some people off and know that, hey, I give them a chance anyway. That's right. We need to have the Holy Spirit in our life that we can start convicting people, convincing people they need to get saved. Would you stand this morning?